we can't have this aggressive, unfair, and actually very anti-Quranic view of what it means to do Amr bil Ma'roof. And just insult another Muslim and say, by the way, your beard is haram, or your, your clothes, or your this, or your that. What? Where did that come from? What kind of Amr bil Ma'roof is this? What kind of Tawasi bil Haq is this? That's a joke. Now that's a mockery of what the deen actually says. This was not the way of the prophets. But now we get to the word haq, one of the most powerful terms in the Qur'an, its root being used well over 200 times across the entire Qur'an in many, many ways. First, I'll share some things about its etymology and then inshallah, we'll connect these two phrases together, or these two words together. Al-Arabiyyatu qad ista'malatuhu hissiyan fi ta'na la zayga fiha وَالْمُحَقَّقُ مِنَ الثِّيَابَ الْمُحْكَمَ النَّسِيجِ وَالْحِقُّ مِنَ الْإِبِلْ الَّذِي اشْتَدَّ وَاسْتَحَقَّ أَنْ يُرْكَمْ Arabic roots often have a visual image associated with them, even though they're abstract and essentially. The word haq means truth, which is an abstract thing. But the Arabs had some visual imagery associated with the same origin. And so that's what I'll share with you first. They use it for الطَّعْنَ لَا زِيغَ فِيهَا They use it for a cut or a slice that's direct and straight. There's no like, you know, when you're cutting cloth or whatever, the line goes sideways. But if it's perfectly straight, that's actually called haq also. It's also muhaqqaq is used for clothes that are perfectly stitched. And there's no loose stitching anywhere. Al-muhkam, al-nasij. Al-hiq is used for a camel that is strong enough now, it's mature, it's perfect, and it's now ready to be ridden. In other words, it's purpose, it's, it's met its purpose. You spent money on this camel, and you finally allowed it to, to grow and to get to a certain age. And you know, it, it's hard for you to relate to camels. I know you don't have a camel, probably. Um, I'll tell you, I was in, in, in Masqat not too long ago. I was in a Quran program, and our, our Ustad, he mentioned, you know, man lahu jamal. In the audience, like 300 people in the audience, and he's like, who has a camel? The, everybody raised their hand except me. And I felt like, well, I really am not in America anymore. <laughs> but yeah, old Arabic examples are about camels, right? So the idea is somebody invested in their camel, let it grow, and now it's finally perfectly ready to be taken on a ride for long, long durations on a long haul in, in the desert. That's actually also called hiq. Now what does that mean in the figurative sense? How did that word then become truth? Actually the word haq means a number of things and those of you that are, the three of you that are taking notes, you should write this down. The first thing that haq means is reality or an undeniable truth. Reality or an undeniable truth. That's the first meaning of haq. The second meaning of haq is actually purpose. خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بالحق. He created the skies and the earth with purpose. Okay, so the first one was truth, reality. The second one is purpose. Now go back. Think, think about each one as I describe it. They counsel one another to what? Truth, reality. You give someone advice, you need to be real with them. You can't sugarcoat the truth to them. You might say, if I tell them what it really is, their feelings might get hurt. If I tell them they're being unjust to their children, or unfair to their mother, or you know, not right in the matters of inheritance, or they're, they're, you know, they're swindling money, or they're lying about these business transactions, or they're not giving somebody the money they deserve, etc., etc. If I call them out, in, in, in that way, then that's going to be offensive to them. No, first and foremost, you can't sugarcoat the truth. What it is, is what it is, and you have to be real about it. The second thing is, they counsel one another to purpose. وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقْ To purpose. There are people around us who are capable of much more, and often they lose sight of their purpose. And it's important for us to take whatever opportunity we can find, to give them heartfelt counsel so they can find their purpose yet again. Have you assumed that we just made you and you can just roam around free and do whatever? You have no purpose? No, actually, everything else was made with purpose. So were you. So the idea of actually taking a young man who's like addicted to video games and does nothing else with his life, 
or taking somebody who's become depressed and says, I don't want to do anything, and to actually take your co time to counsel them and to find their, help them find their way back towards purpose again, to, to pull them in a, in a better direction again. This is part of the meaning of وَتَوَاسَوْ bilhaq. By the way, what I didn't mention is part of the meaning of wasiya. When somebody leaves a will, do they leave it for people who they love or who they hate? They love. And sometimes it's not just percentages of income, it's, you know, as I die, I want to remind you that I love you, you know, do this, this, and this, and, you know, I forgive all the bad things you ever did, etc., etc. And if somebody's at the hospital bed, they're about to die, their last words, their loved ones are listening, crying, they'll never forget those last words. The idea of using that word is that this advice that's being given, even if you're giving, you're being real with somebody, you're sharing the raw, ugly truth with somebody, you're, you are not to use anything but the most loving, compassionate tone. That's what you're supposed to be using. And you're, th because that's what wasiya is by definition. So you can't just say, by the way, what you're doing, you're gonna burn in hell. Why would you say that? Well, cause the Quran says, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقْ أَمْرِ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Baby, that's what I just did. No, you, you didn't. That's not وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقْ That is not how that's done. It's done with love. It's done out of concern. It's done rec thinking about their future. That's what wasiya is. You're concerned about somebody's well-being in the future. So that's the second meaning of haq. The third meaning of haq is actually to deserve something or to have the right to something. Rightfulness. Haq alayhimul adab. That the, the punishment was justified on them. Or walladhina fi amwalihim haqqun ma'loom. Lissa'ili wal mahroom. Those who have, هم في أموالهم حق معلوم. Those people who have a portion of their money is a known حق for people who might ask or people that have been deprived. In other words, part of our money is supposed to go to charity. That part is a حق for somebody else. Is a right of somebody else. They counsel one another about what? Rights. They counsel one another about rights. Meaning you're not giving your mother her right. You're not giving your friend his right. You're not giving your fellow Muslim his right. They counsel, and by the way, they don't just counsel one another about others' rights. They also often counsel them about their own rights. Because sometimes somebody is, you know, uh, deprived. Somebody's wronged. Somebody thinks lesser of themselves. And you have to remind them that they are worth more. They have more rights than that. That Allah has dignified them, so they shouldn't humiliate themselves. It's both. You use the word haq to remind people of their responsibilities to others, and also what they are owed. This is part of the meaning of وَتَوَاصَوْ bilhaq. We have to let parents know what their rights are. We also have to let the parents know what their responsibilities are. It's part of tawasi bilhaq. We have to know business partners have to know what their rights are and their responsibilities are. That's within tawasi bilhaq. And that, that implication comes out of that third meaning, rightfulness. Then of course, haq also means justice. Like the Quran says, يَهْدُونَ بِالْحَقِّ وَهُمْ يَعْدِلُونَ Haq, they, they, they guide people by the, by haq, and by it they do justice. قَالَ رَبِّ حْكُمْ بِالْحَقْ We make a, 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 he said to Allah, Master, make a verdict with haq. Meaning make, how do you make a verdict? Using justice. So haq, in the sense that Allah used the truth, and use justice to pass your verdict. فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَنَا بِالْحَقِّ وَاللَّهُ يَقْضِي بِالْحَقِّ You know, make a verdict between us, you know, uh, pass a final judgment between us using the haqq. Allah passes his verdicts using haqq. When Dawud alayhi salam was a qadi, when he was a, was a judge, what does Allah say to him? يَا دَاوُدُ إِنَّا جَعَلْنَكَ خَلِيفَةً فِي الْأَرْضِ فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَى فَيُضِلَّكَ عَن سَبِيلِ الله. Dawood, we have made you a khalifa on the earth, judge between people using haq. They counsel one another now to the fourth thing. The first thing was reality. We're real with people when we give them counsel. We don't do mujamala. We don't tell them what they want to hear. We don't sugarcoat the truth. Understand this one thing, by the way. The Prophet ﷺ was the softest, kindest, nicest, most gentle human being in history. Right? Like, pe people who were rough around the edges, like the people of Mecca, used to only have good words for him. 
And yet, he's the nicest, and that never changed. And yet, he's sharing the Qur'an with his society. And the Qur'an is not sugarcoating nothing. So you have the softest man ever, sometimes describing the harshest realities ever. Which means, the way you deliver must remain soft. But what you deliver must remain genuine and true. You understand? Those two things are separate. What we do is we confuse those two things. So what we do instead is, no, we don't want to talk about that because somebody's feelings might be hurt. No, feelings might be hurt by the way you say it. But you cannot worry about feelings being hurt in regards to what you have to say. The truth is the truth is the truth. وَتَوَاصَوْ bilhaq. You can't get away from it. And you're not even doing it for somebody else. This is your effort and my effort to save ourselves. So these four implications of haq must be kept in mind. Counseling people to the truth. Counseling people to purpose in ourselves. Counseling each other to our rights. Counseling one another towards justice, fairness. And fairness is not only a matter of sharia and of fatawa. Fairness is in everything. Fairness is in how you dealt with somebody. Fairness is how you spoke to somebody. Fairness is how I, I looked at somebody. Fairness can be the most subtle things. But, and, and the, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ had really like a sharp lens when it came to fairness. They were really, really careful about that. Right? So, with, in, in, in some cases you had Companions bringing verdicts and cases to a, one of the companions and saying, "Can you make a? We have a, have a disagreement with this non-Muslim." And I say, "Hey, friend, sit down. Let's do this." And he says, "No, you can't judge between us. You just called me friend, so you're already bar- partial. We're not doing this because there's already a bias. You already like me. You can't be a fair judge, you know." So the idea of impartiality and really looking at justice and with, a, with a sensitive lens, that's what tawasaw bil haq also. There are two things that are being um, highlighted here. What is it that we, we're doing tawasi to? What are we doing counsel to? And how are we doing that counsel? So there's the what and there's the how. The beautiful thing about the letter ba in the Arabic language, wa tawasaw bil haq, is that the ba can be used to answer the question what? And it can also be used to answer the question how? So the ayah is multidimensional because it's saying multiple things in that one phrase. So in terms of what, we know that we're counseling each other to fairness, to rights, to reality, to the truth. I already told you this is about serious things. So this is not that sister sections, you see some woman with nail polish and say your wudu is not accepted and your salah is not... That's not tawasi bil haq. That's not purpose. That's not the truth. That's not reality. No, no, no. Easy. There are bigger things that are tawasi bil haq. How do you learn what really is tawasi bil haq and what isn't? Study Quran. You'll find out. What is the Quran emphasizing? What is it highlighting? And it doesn't just highlight what you should emphasize. It highlights how you talk to people. How do you bring something up when something is wrong? I would be okay with somebody praying, and they're, they're, somebody's praying here, and they prayed a little fast. And I go up to them and say, hey, that was too fast, do it again. That was no good. Uh, in my mind, I would first say, this person, maybe this is the first time they're in a masjid. In like a year. How would I know? And the fact that they're here is a pretty good, pretty good thing. And if the only thing they ever got here when they got here was you, you prayed too fast. Your sajda was like a hit and run. Like a bird pecking on the ground or something. I mean, what was that? Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la? Really? How fast can you say that? Subhana You know? What did you just do? If they hear that, will they ever come back here again? Nope. Nope. That's not tawasi. You want to correct somebody, but wait, you want to see, that may be a symptom of a much larger problem. And maybe this is not the time to say it, and the right place to say it, and the right way to say it. That's the thing about wasiyah, right? It's at a very specific time. And so you find the right time, place, opportunity, choose the right words, and then share those things. And share them in a loving, compassionate kind of way. Our Quran's interest is not in changing people, changing people's behavior. 
Allah kept, Allah keeps telling his prophet sallallahu you're not in charge of them <laughs> you're not in charge of people you can't change them all you can do is remind them that's all you can do is remind fadakir in nafa'at dhikra fadakir in ma anta mudhakkir musa alayhisalam wasn't told convince firaun he wasn't told that Argue with him, defeat him in argument and convince him. Nope. Both of you go, speak to him nicely. Speak to the Pharaoh nicely. Kills the mass murderer of babies. Calls himself God. Speak to him softly. Maybe he'll become a good person. That's not up to you though. Your job is just to speak calmly with him. This is part of Tawasi bil haq this is how we have to understand it. We can't have this aggressive, unfair, and actually very anti-Quranic view of what it means to do Amr bil Ma'roof. And just insult another Muslim and say, by the way, your beard is haram, or your, your clothes, or your this, or your that. What? Where did that come from? What kind of Amr bil Ma'roof is this? What kind of Tawasi bil Haq is this? That's a joke. Now that's a mockery of what the deen actually says. This was not the way of the prophets. Anyhow, then I told you it's what they counsel to. I highlighted those four things. But there's also a how do you counsel? Allah says, That bil haq can also mean how do you engage in counsel? You engage in counsel fairly. You're fair when you're giving advice. You think through it and you're fair. And you're justified in giving advice. You're rightful in giving advice. You're, you're honest in giving, you're, you have honesty in giving advice. So the, na- the nature in which you do it, you come across as honest and you are genuinely honest. You find the right time and place to do it. You find the right words to do it. This is all part of the how captured inside the word haq. Now, فَإِذَا أَخَذْتَ الْحَقْ بِالْمَعْنَ الْعَامِ الْوَسِيعِ كَانَ مَحْبُوبًا لِلْعَقْلِ وَالْقَلْبِ مَعًا وَاشْتَمَلَ الْعِلْمِ وَالْعَمَلِ جَمِيعًا If you were to think about the word haq, it actually it becomes something. The counsel becomes something that will be loved by the mind and the heart together. When it comes to counseling somebody, you can give arguments, rational proofs, evidences, quote the Qur'an, quote the Prophet ﷺ, show them the hadith is sahih, show them the fatwa of alim, whatever. What are you doing? You've got some haq. But there's another dimension to that haq, which has to do with your heart, the way in which you counseled. And so, if you truly embody haq, then it's not just the, the, the opposite of falsehood, يعني كان ضدا كان ضدا للباطل والجور والفساد فعلم أن ملاك النجاة إصلاح القوى العقلية والأخلاقية وأن للعقل والقلب كليهما جانبين من اللين والشدة. That's the thing. It's a it's a two-edged sword. The truth is harsh, isn't it? And Allah is saying this people are going to say the harsh truth, but they're going to say it in a super loving way. So you're going to say something that, yeah, it may not be easy to hear. And yet at the same time, you've got to say it in a way that softens the blow and is still loving and caring. You know? That's the, that's the, the balance we have to strike. I say this and I never get tired of saying it because it's one of our biggest problems. Allah gets angry in the Qur'an because He has the right to. You and I don't have the right to. Even if we're quoting an ayah in which Allah is angry, I'm not supposed to get angry. That's not my place. I give you the analogy over and over so it sits in your head. If I'm yelling at one of my kids, Why did you do that? Why did you do that? And one of my little ones comes over, Yeah, why did you do it? <laughs> what? Who are you to get angry? I'm the one who gets, has the right to get angry. I'm the authority here. Why are you acting like you're in charge? Well, I'm quoting you. Uh, you can't just quote me and assume my authority. If we get offended by that with our kid, imagine when we take Allah's kalam and assume His anger and His authority when we speak. That's, that's not our place. And that's within the meanings of haqq. Anyhow. So on the one side, tawasi bil haqq also means that when you, when you do give counsel, you don't just give emotional counsel. You know, you should do this. Why should I do it? 
Because Islam says, where does it say? Don't talk too much. You should have haq with you. Like if, if you're from where I come from, if you ask further questions, you might get, don't be Batamese. Show some respect. Watch yourself. No, I just want to know where it came from. Did, did the Prophet say? Yeah, he did. Where? You be quiet. If you're going to give counsel, then you better have the truth with you. You better know where that came from. And maybe in the course of giving counsel, you realize that your counsel is wrong. It's possible that you came to give counsel and you ended up in the course of that very conversation becoming the recipient of counsel. You shouldn't be giving this advice because it's not good. And at that point, if your ego sparks, and my ego sparks, and we say, Oh, I came to give you, you <laughs> to give me? Forget it. I'm out of here. These people, man, they don't even listen. <laughs> then you don't understand what tawasi means. At any given moment, you and I are able to acknowledge we're wrong. And any given moment, the one that, was, that we were advising, turns around and starts giving, us advice. It certainly can happen. The tables can turn very easily. Allah turns these tables for uh, Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam was traveling. You know the story at the end of Surah Al-Kahf. He was traveling. And his student, the young man who was with him, fell asleep. And he got upset with him. And not too much later, Musa alayhi salam himself is a student. And he makes slips. And his teacher gets upset with him. <laughs> he was on the giving end, and he immediately became on the receiving end. Subhanallah. That happens. The teacher becomes the student. Sometimes the student becomes the teacher. It may happen. So, this is a... Yarhamukallah. So, when I say tawasi bil haqq, then... From the, from, from the spiritual sense, it's also a, a sense of responsibility. We have to instill in people haq, meaning we have to remind them that they are responsible, that they are, Allah is going to hold them to account, or that they can't just get away with doing things the way they're doing. And we all have to be this way.